3. Sugar and Other Carbohydrates The different sorts of sugar, including sucrose and glucose, all belong to a group of substances known as carbohydrates. Since we shall be talking of these substances from time to time, let us look at the whole group for a moment. The carbohydrates in our diet can be divided into those that the body can digest and absorb from the gut and those that cannot be absorbed. They are sometimes referred to as digestible and indigestible, or available and unavailable. The unavailable carbohydrates, which pass through the body virtually unchanged, make up the greater part of what is now known as fibre and used to be called roughage. This mostly consists of cellulose, the chief constituent of cotton and paper. The available or digestible carbohydrate of the diet consists almost entirely of sugars and starch. They are made up of units called monosaccharides. Chemists apply the word sugar to any one of a particular group of substances that have similar properties but are not identical. Some of the better-known sugars are glucose, fructose, maltose, lactose and sucrose. These are either monosaccharides or disaccharides. The best-known monosaccharides, sugars made up of single units, are glucose, fructose and galactose. Glucose is the first product of photosynthesis in plants and is the main source of energy for both plants and animals. Fructose, together with some glucose and sucrose, is found in fruits. Galactose exists only in the animal kingdom, as part of milk's sugar, lactose. Glucose is a sugar found, usually with other sugars, in some fruits and vegetables. It is very important to biochemists, biologists and nutritionists because it is a key material in the metabolism of all plants and animals. Many of our principal foods are sooner or later converted in the body to glucose, and it is one of the most important substances that is metabolized, oxidized or burned, in the tissues to supply energy for everyday activities. There is always glucose in the bloodstream, and this is usually called blood sugar. In healthy people, a complicated interaction of a number of hormones contrives to keep the level of blood sugar fairly constant. If you eat ordinary sugar or starch or one of several other substances, glucose will be released during digestion, and this will be absorbed from the alimentary canal into the blood. The level of blood glucose, therefore, rises immediately. However, there is an outflow of hormones, especially insulin, from the pancreas into the bloodstream. The effect of this is to lower the level of glucose toward its normal level. This works chiefly by converting it into a polysaccharide made of many monosaccharide units, called glycogen, and tucking this away in the muscles and liver where it can be called upon again to release glucose if the level in the blood falls. Sucrose, the chemical name for the subject of this book, is one of three common disaccharides. It is made up of one unit of glucose joined to one unit of fructose. When digested, a mixture of equal amounts of glucose and fructose called invert sugar is produced. There is reason to believe that it is the fructose part of sucrose that is responsible for many of the undesirable effects of sucrose in the body. There are two other disaccharides to be found in human diets. One is maltose, made up of two units of glucose joined together. This is produced during the digestion of starch, for example when grain like barley begins to germinate, or when starch is in the mouth being chewed, or when it reaches the intestine. It is later digested to glucose. The third disaccharide is lactose, produced by the joining together of two monosaccharides, glucose and galactose. It occurs only in milk or in foods such as yogurt that are made from milk and that include the water part. 
Large quantities of lactose cause diarrhea, and even relatively small quantities have this effect on people with lactose intolerance. However, such people are not affected by small amounts of milk, say up to a pint a day, taken at intervals. They also tolerate cheese, since most of the lactose remains in whey when the cheese is made. Starch, which occurs as a store of energy in plants, is made up of many glucose units joined together and is therefore called a polysaccharide. It is easily digested either by enzymes in the body or enzymes extracted from molds or by heating in solution with acid. The effect is to break down the starch into smaller and smaller pieces. The early stages result in the production of dextrins. Later, maltose is produced, and finally glucose. Glycogen, as we saw, is another polysaccharide, found in the liver and muscles of animals. Like starch, it is a store of energy, but unlike starch, it is present in relatively small quantities. The total amount of glycogen in an adult human body is no more than 350 grams. Cellulose is also a polysaccharide, but is not digestible.